Good evening, everybody. Atma Namaste. Welcome Atma today. Atma Namaste, to... Sumi. Thank you so much. Yes, so welcome to our session today, Chapter 7. Yes, are you looking forward to the information? Yes, very much. <laughs> yes, all right. So um, we're going to start off very soon. Let's uh, start with a short invocation and then we'll get into the topic. I'd like to finish it today if that's possible. Yeah, so give me a moment. Let me go live with this. Let's close our eyes, connect tongue to our palate. Inhale and exhale, relax the body. Feel yourself in the presence of God, our beloved teacher, Grand Master Chua, Lord Maha Guruji Meling, Buddha Kwanian, Buddha Sakyamuni, Gautama Buddha, to the Lord Christ, to Lord Yehoshua Bar Miriam, to Lord Ganesha, to Lord Shiva. To all the host of angels and beings of knowledge, light and power, and especially to all the teachers, the masters of theosophy, to our soul and divine self, we humbly ask for your blessings. We also invoke for the blessings of the beings of communication, of our respective internets and Wi-Fi's. We ask for your blessings and guidance, guidance all through the session. We ask you to help us to be open and receptive to all the priceless teachings being imparted to us today. Help us to have a clearer and deeper understanding of these pearls of wisdom being given to us today. Help us to absorb and assimilate this so we may have a greater understanding of who we are, what we are, and we will continue with your, continue to be your best instruments to do your work right now, now, now. We humbly offer ourselves as instruments to do your work with thanks and in full faith. So be it. Atma Namaste. Welcome today to our session. We're going to be doing the uh, textbook of Theosophy working towards chapter number seven, which is called Reincarnation. So if you do have the books, it would be good for you to use it as your reference. So it becomes easy to understand what's being said today. Yes. And so till yesterday, we were talking about actually leaving the physical body, leaving the astral body, leaving the mental body and going back home to our causal body, which is basically our true home. Yes. And once we reach there, why would we come back? Right. And that process of coming back and again, going and coming back and going, that whole process, that cyclic process is basically what is referred to as reincarnation. And so we're going to go into the topic now. So let me share. Well, we already have 12 messages today. Uh, the inner world that we refer to, is it the astral plane? Um, to an extent, yes, it is uh, the astral plane, uh, especially with reference to uh, when Master Chaw talks about the beings that are there, the presence of those beings, usually he's referring to uh, the astral body. Yes. So coming back. So let's move into our chapter. Yes. So may, may I request something? So may, may I request Sorry. something? Yes. All can uh, switch off the video. It will be help to uh, give a good uh, audio clarity. So All right. Sure. It, there are not too many people with video anyway. There's like maybe four people. <laughs> But it's nice for me to see some of you because otherwise it gets very boring looking at uh, uh, just a plain screen. Thank you. Nevada. I do. I do agree. Thank, Thank you so much. All right. So let's move on. I'm going to mute everybody now like we usually do. Okay. So uh, to move on, when we talk about, sorry. So when we talk about uh, the seventh chapter, which is reincarnation, we're basically talking about the cyclic process from the causal level coming back and going again back to the causal body, uh, to the causal world, which is basically our home, right? And so that is something that we need to remember. So moving on. Yes, uh, so when we look at the higher soul, which they refer to as the ego, it is easier for us uh, being pranic healers and those who've done soul and arhatic yoga, we just call it the higher soul for better and easier reference. All right. So when the higher soul, 
which is where we all are, when we, the incarnated soul, reunite with our higher soul in the causal level, what happens is a developed soul, a developed incarnated soul, enjoys this time when it's back home. It actually has uh, a very satisfying, very fulfilling, glorious time in the causal level. However, for the ordinary man, he has lost sensation. Yes, he has lost sensation of um, life itself. Yes, so he is barely conscious as we noticed yesterday in the session. And so he is just in like a lost dream state and not fully alive. However, the need to be fully alive does come back. And so to help continue with the process, what this ordinary man, in this case, the higher soul in the sense of ordinary man, what they do is they then push themselves down again, back into the lower matter, going deeper and deeper into grosser and grosser matter till they actually individualize uh, with their new bodies. Yes, and so they reincarnate with their new bodies. Now, as they come down, they start to feel more and more alive, right? However, uh, going back to what we were talking about, this process of coming down, for us, this descending into the physical um, level, physical body, getting this physical body and coming down into the physical world, we have done this for millions of years. Yes, it's not just that we've done it uh, very recently. It has been a process that we've been going through for a very, very, very long time, right? And so for an ordinary man, they have already had many, many lifetimes of coming and going, coming and going. And as the last line say, they still have a fairly long time uh, to continue and to come back and go continue with the cyclic process for a longer period of time. So they are somewhere where they've completed a portion, but there's still a certain portion of this life still remaining. Yes, the cyclic life. So they still do have that in front of them is what they say. Yes. Uh, so this is basically what happens to most of us uh, if we consider ourselves ordinary. But if you consider yourself developed, then hopefully you've done most of your uh, cyclic process already and you're almost towards the end of it. So to move on, what happens with the incarnated soul at this point is when it decides to actually come down into the physical world, the physical world is where they have to learn their lessons Yes. And so I actually refer to the earth as an earth school. So you, you are like a student uh, who decides to come here so that you can actually learn, you can actually progress. Right. And so what happens is you and I come down into, uh, you and I will continue to come here on a regular basis. Now, what they say is if I consider this the earth school, so you come to the earth school, but when you come this lifetime is just like one day in school, right? And so you finish one day in school and you go back and then you kind of uh, take your rest, you recoup in, in the causal level. And then again, you come back for the second day of school, hoping to learn and prepare yourself better for the second day, right? And so your life continues like this in, in the school. And so the best way for us as students Yes, uh, for our students, for us as students to learn are a few things that I'm going to talk about, right? Um, can you tell me if my connection is, uh, can you hear me well? Can you put a thumbs up if you can hear me, especially those on the video? Okay, fine, perfect. So coming back. So you and I, since we come down to the earth as students, as, as proper or apt students who want to become better, you want to have a greater grasp of the rules of the school. How does school actually work? You know, what can you do? What can you not do? And then you try and change your behavior the way you want to behave. Yes, that means along with your thoughts, the way you want to use words in school, the way you want to do your, uh, or, uh, uh, your actions in school will all depend on what you understand as the rules in the school. And so when you understand the rules, you would see to it that your conduct is according to those rules. Yes. And even what you are taught in school on a regular basis, whatever you learn in school, you try to learn it really quickly. You try to understand it. You try to figure out how it works. You try to understand the subjects and then you move on with life. 
Yes. Now, if you are this kind of a student, then your life, your physical life in the physical world is comparatively short. Yes. And it is, it, it is a learning and an experiential time here. And so when you go back, you have, yes, your time in the astral and mental world before you go back to your causal body, but you don't find it very, very difficult. Yes. And so as students, if we can then figure out how we would normally adjust, right, uh, to different environments, maybe a school, maybe an office, right? There are guidelines, there are rules, the way you, you, you uh, treat a certain elder, how you treat another person, how you talk to someone in school, the respect you give, all these things we've learned in school. But then most of us forget that we have a similar learning in the earth school on this earth. If we can start understanding those, then your life here will become much easier, much more simplified, right? And so if you can then understand the rules, then work your conduct, your behavior according to that, learn quickly, your life will be comparatively easier and simpler on the whole, all right? However, if the student is dull, right? And he is unable to learn, just the opposite of what we were talking about earlier, if he's unable to learn what we're talking about, then what happens is he doesn't understand the rules. His ignorance makes him break these rules and life starts to become very, very difficult for him. Yes. And what happens is because of this, there is a delay in going back home. Yes. And so this particular soul finds going back home taking longer, right? So just think of a student in class. He doesn't like coming to school. He can't understand what the teacher is saying. He doesn't understand why there are these rules, why the principal says this, why the teacher says this, doesn't enjoy it at all, right? And then sometimes is not aware of the rules and goes and does something crazy, gets into trouble. And so literally finds that school is a terrible place to be in. Yes, and so such souls find life very tough. And also they find that the whole process is taking way too long. Uh, school feels like it's a very, very long time, even that one day. Yeah. Now, uh, so either the pupil, yes, figures it out and works towards it. However, regardless of which type of student you are, whether you are intelligent enough to figure it all out, or you're a dull student or a wayward student, you've got to understand one thing that in this earth school, no pupil can fail. None of us can fail. Yes. Regardless of how badly we perform, regardless of how much time we spend in the class, none of us can fail. And the second thing to remember is all of us will reach that end. None of us can be left behind. We will all be progressing invariably. So whether you put in the effort or not to an extent, you will be coming, you will be reaching the end of the evolution that you have worked or you have been working towards or um, the deity that has sent us down for us to go back, that will still, pro still uh, proceed. Yes, but if you can understand, yes, and you can work with it, you align yourself with the way this whole uh, school works, then you will move faster through that process. Yes, so again, remember, none of us can fail and none of us will be left behind. We will all reach towards the end, just that some might go ahead of us. If we catch up, if we are intelligent enough, we understand, then we can also catch up with the rest of them. And so um, they say here in the book, they say an apt student learns quickly, has an intelligent grasp of the rules, uh, stays away from trouble and therefore adapts to the conduct. And then this school life is then comparatively short. However, duller boys uh, do not understand, do not learn quickly and constantly due, due to their ignorance, uh, break them. And uh, wayward students, what happens with them, uh, they see the rules, they cannot bring themselves to work with the rules, they cannot be in harmony, they invariably, you know, for example, uh, jumping out of class, um, not coming to school, uh, bunking school. So these kind of things also happen with some souls, they, they completely uh, use this whole lifetime doing all sorts of crazy, crazy things. Uh, but again, a reminder, like the last line, for this is a school in which no pupil ever fails, Everyone must go to the end. So remember that as we proceed. Yes. So coming back. So if you and I can understand this, our life starts to become better. So I'm going to repeat myself again here uh, when I share this. So if you look at this. 
So if you're in the earth school, what do you want to do? You want to cooperate intelligently with the teachers and with the principal. You want to try and understand, hey, how does this whole thing work? Yes, you want to maximize, yes, the work that you can possibly do this one day in school so that you have less to carry over. Yes, you want to understand, comprehend the rules of the school. You want to shape your life in accordance with those rules. And then you want to learn whatever you can this lifetime so it becomes easier, right? So if you can work towards these five points, yes, uh, co cooperate with, with the seniors or the others that you have to work with, maximize on the work, uh, understand the rules and then shape your life according to it. And lastly, learn whatever is necessary. Your life will become far simpler, far easier. Now, in theosophy, why are we doing this study? Because in theosophy, they start to explain this great law to us. Yes. And since this law is given to us, then we have a greater advantage as a student to study in the school. Yes. And so the two basic, very important laws that theosophy is talking to us about in, in the process of coming and going is one is the law of evolution. Yes. And the second is the law of cause and effect right? Uh, which is also associated with the law of karma. So what happens is uh, you and I understand, for example, science, and it does say there that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? And so when you understand this is the mechanics through which everything works, it becomes easier. So when you are in school and they tell you, okay, fine, this is how it works. Yes. Uh, this is the action and because of this action there's a reaction in in the motor system and therefore this allows this motor to move forward for example now because you can see what your action and and you can see the reaction at the same physical time yes or more or less at the same uh, time you start to accept it yes so the 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 law of cause and effect in the physical world with reference to physical objects that you see, for example, uh, things that operate in your house, things that you use on a regular basis, since you notice the action and the reaction, you are aware of it, you understand it, and you work with it. However, even in our higher lives, even in the higher worlds, yes, the same law applies. Whatever we do will come back to us. The only difference is it may not happen immediately. Right. Like, for example, when we see uh, the, the car moving or you see certain things that, you know, the action is there and then there's already a, a reaction to it. However, with many of us, the action that we have done, the reaction may not be immediate. It might be much further apart. It might be much longer. Now, whether this longer will happen in that first day of your school, one week after your school, one month after your school, we do not know when that will fruitify or bear fruit. Yes. So whatever seed we sow will, will be something you and I will reap. So if we can understand this concept, you might have a greater understanding of how to deal with your life. Yes. And so to continue with that, right. And so we're talking about basically two laws, the law of evolution and the law of cause and effect or the law of karma, simply put. Yes. And so what happens is with the law of evolution, when the student is in the, in the school, he has a great advantage if he understands this, because when you look at the law of evolution, every man has to become perfect, right? Pure and perfect. So to unfold his complete and full potential, is what he is here to do. So you, are, you and I are here to try and then manifest the, the greatness in us. Yes, the best in us. We have to work towards it. That is the law of evolution. We cannot go backwards. So every possibility, every, as the book says, every divine possibility within us has to manifest. And that's why you and I are here. The unfoldment of this, this entire process is to get us to evolve to the highest, highest degree. That is, the, um, that is the goal of this entire scheme, the scheme of evolution itself, yes? And so you and I are part of this. So the wise man will then figure out how it works, anticip anticipates the demands of this particular school, 
and then figures out how to fulfill it. Yes. So if you can pick it up, if you can understand this, then your life will start to become much easier. Yes. So the law of cause and effect for me to continue with it is not it's not a system of reward and punishment. Yes, people think, oh, you know what? This is happening to me because I did something and this is my punishment and I should take this punishment because God thinks I'm not a good person. There are all kinds of nonsense that people start to say. But uh, the teaching says, none of this is punishment. It is based on what you have done. And so you have created the situation you are in. It's no one out there who says, you know what? I like her more than him. And so I'm going to make her life better than his. No, there's nothing like that. The great deity wants all of us to evolve, all of us to manifest our divine potential, to manifest our greatness, as Master Chua says, right? That's all the great de deity wants. But however, in the process of coming through school, we create certain actions, we create certain thoughts and certain words that have an impact. And that then further either enhances our progress or retards our progress to a certain extent until and unless we work on it to become better. And therefore the law of cause and effect. Yes. So if a man doesn't understand this, he lags behind and then he feels like every time he comes down, every time he comes to school, every day he comes to school, he finds it a torture. He finds it really painful. He wish he wasn't here in the earth school. That's how painful it becomes. But if you understand this is what is happening, and this is what I need to do, I can change this so-called destiny in my life, then you have already started to learn. And maybe learn quicker, so then your life can be more comfortable and shorter. Yes? And so it says here, the sense of being hunted and driven by his fate is what this person feels. And the man who is intelligent cooperates, yes, and then feels perfectly free. So what I want to help all of us understand is that these are the two laws. If you can start to understand the laws, yes, you can then help live this life, this lifetime much better. This one day at school can definitely be better than the other days that you and I have enjoyed here. So remember that the, the that law um, and nature by itself is not here to punish us. There is no reward. There is no punishment. So it actually goes on to say that uh, there are people who start to feel that things are done to them, you know, on, on um, there's some kind of partiality happening there, but that's not the case. So it says here, when we send out good thoughts, good actions, we receive the same as well, right? So that's the second one that, that shows up here in my PowerPoint. So the first one is when you and I start to understand this is just the law of cause and effect and there is no reward punishment here. Yes. Uh, however, when we, when we start to have good thoughts and good actions uh, that we do, then we will receive the same in return. And this action that we create is spread over sometimes a shorter period of time and sometimes a longer period of time. Yes. And so we have to realize it will manifest at some point. And lastly, uh, the, the accounts for the different people that we have, our lives and the lives of our friends and our family depend on the same law of cause and effect. Yes. And so some of you might feel you know what, this is what my life is, but why am I going through such a difficult time and the other person is not going through a difficult time? So you have to understand that we are all different only because of what you and I have created through these so-called thoughts and words and actions. And so going back to the teachings of Lord Buddha, he says, if you can practice right thoughts, right words and right action, yes, you can actually reduce the karmic effect Yes, uh, especially the negative karmic effect that can come back to you in life. And so it says, in a, it accounts for the different destinies imposed upon people and also the difference in people themselves. And so that's why you'll notice because of this, because all of us are going through the same process of evolution, but how come our lives are so different? It's because of the law of cause and effect. Depending on what we've done in the past and what we have created, 
and the fruits of that will start to manifest in different lifetimes. So what I might have this lifetime might be very different from what I might have in a different lifetime. So today's school day will be very different for me from tomorrow's school day. Yes. And so you need to, you and I both need to remember that my life is such because of what I have done. The thoughts, the words and the actions from my past are now bearing fruit in my life right now. And the same for the other person. So say it's my sister. So her thoughts, her words, her actions are now creating her present right now, which will be very different from mine. The same with your good friend. So what he has created in his thoughts, his words and his actions are then influencing his life right now. And so that is a big, big change in all our lives and causes differences in the way we live, causes differences in the way our lives continue to go ahead and also each lifetime for us. And so again, to repeat myself, this is the reason because of the law of cause and effect, you and I have different destinies, different styles or uh, living this particular lifetime is very, very different from another person. And even as a person, we're very different from another person. Yes. And so this is one thing that we need to do. Let me just go back to that. Yes. And so these are the points that I've been trying to share at this point here. Yeah? So one is to remember it's only law of cause and effect. There is no reward and punishment. Whatever we do will, will be something that you and I have to pay for. And I'll come to that in a bit. Uh, the next is that whatever you create, especially good, will come back to you, which means when we create bad thoughts or negative thoughts or negative action, it will also come back to us, right? And because of these actions and thoughts and words, every one of us, each one of us, sorry, uh, accounts and accounts to have different destinies and different types of people that we all tend to be. So to move on to the next one. So again, continuing with the law uh, of cause and effect. So when you learn to use, because you see, when we are sent here, there, there is a certain amount of what we have created. Yes, uh, the law of karma, if I can call it that. There is a certain amount of law of karma that hangs over us. So there is that which is good and that which is bad. And so there's a certain percentage that we need to manifest and certain percentage of this which we can manifest. You've got to remember when you look at primitive man, if you look at the kind of thoughts, words, and actions they probably created, most of it may not have been very good. Yes, a huge percentage would have been bad or negative. And so if that bad and negative has to then manifest the very next lifetime for that uh, soul, it might be too harsh. It might be too much. Yeah, and so that soul might feel very crushed. And so these great beings are these great angels. So what do they do? Uh, you have created your own um, cause and effect. You've created your own karma. And so they decide to then figure out, okay, how much of it can this person handle? And so though you have created a lot, good and bad, they will decide to give you only a portion of it. So when that portion comes down to you, then you can handle it because it has good and the so-called not so good. And so it becomes easier for you to pass through from one incarnation to another, to another. And so what you might have done, say 60 uh, incarnations ago might be manifesting now because it's only now that you and I are becoming better. The, the other thing is when, when you, you are given uh, karmas to work out, especially karmas where you need to learn something, you're given a choice to either learn, yes, with that person or with that experience or with that situation or not. So you have the free will to figure out, am I going to now use at this point, right thoughts, right words, right action in the situation and learn from it and move on? Or am I continue to go to becoming uh, negative in my thoughts, in my words and in my action, not helping the situation? So the choice is actually in our hands. Yes. And so with this freedom that uh, you and I have, we are able to then use this to help then create more good thoughts, good words and actions, which help in our evolution. Yes. So let me just uh, share here. So they say the genius and the precocious child 
are examples not of favoritism of some deity or god, but of the result produced by previous lives of application. Yes. And so it is based on what you and I have done in our previous lifetime. So that is very, very simply put. Let me go back. Uh, sorry. It's not, ah, okay. Yes. And so if you look here, it will say, so if you can start using that free will of yours to start doing now good, even if it means the manifestation of so-called negative karma manifesting in your life. Yes. Uh, then when you start using this free will to do good, then they will give you more free will. Yes. And so more free will is entrusted upon you. So you can use it then more effectively as you start to evolve. Now, like I mentioned to you, you have this whole cloud, if I can call of karma that is above you, which you have to uh, kind of clear out. Yes. This is like a bank where you have debt. Yes. So if you have a good bank balance, then you can offset off all your debts or loans. But if you do not have enough bank balance, it's going to be very difficult for you to pay off anything that you have, whether it's a, a mortgage, whether it's a loan, whether it's a payment that you need to make, it becomes very, very difficult. And so they say that only a certain amount of this karma falls due in every lifetime of us, not all of it, because you and I cannot handle it. Does that make sense so far? Yes. All right. Now, everything that we have created, especially the negative, which means it's a debt in our, uh, in our case, we have to pay it off. Regardless of how developed you are or how evolved you've gone to, if there is something you have to pay for, you will have to pay for it. Yes. And so remember your present, the life that you're leading today is basically due to the acts of your past. However, your present will build the condition for your future. So in this case, you have a choice. If you want to have a better future, then it lies in your hands. What do you want to think, say, and do? So if you want to have more prosperity, then you need to learn to give money freely. If you want to have more love in your future, you need to give love now. If you want to be more intelligent in your future, you need to start to learn and teach others, even if it's small things, right? So whatever you want, Master Chua says, you have to give. And so if you can plant those seeds today, these seeds will also become trees and bear fruit in your future. So it might be sometimes immediate future for some of us. Sometimes it might be two, three, four days, or maybe a couple of weeks later in the earth school, it might manifest, right? So let me go on to a few more topics before I allow you to ask me questions. Now, keeping this law of cause and effect, right? So every action, yes, uh, every action affects not just you because of what you've done, but there are others who get affected by these thoughts by these words and these actions. So it's not just you. So the karma that we're talking about doesn't get stuck only with you. The, the law of cause and effect doesn't just come and stop at you. You see, when we start to say certain things, there are people around, they might get affected. Your thoughts, the way you start thinking might affect people around you. And of course, definitely your actions. And so what they're trying to tell us is there are what you call trivial. Yes. So your thoughts might be very, very trivial. You know, you just thought that this, this whole group, they are so silly and stupid. Uh, they don't make any sense. So it's very generic, right? And so those are trivial. However, there could be a serious one where you, you actually go towards this one person and you really say things to that person um, and you really harm them with your words. Yes. You literally cut them with your words. Now, when you do that and that person gets seriously affected, then that, then that cause, yes, um, the effect of what you have done is going to then become personal. Yes, but if your words were just in general and you just shout and scream and tell the people, how crazy are you? What are you doing? Baba? It was harmful, yes, but it was more generic. So there are two aspects. One is where the thought could be trivial or the thought is targeted towards this one person only. Every time you see a boss coming, your thought is like, oh, that man is come back. And all the thoughts. It's specific to him. But when it's generic, it's different. So there is what is called trivial. 
and serious. Yes, and most trivial thoughts, uh, words and actions are what you call generic. But when it is targeted at someone, it becomes personal. Right. And so this I need you to understand so I can continue with this part here. And so your actions will affect not just you, but others. And so what you call serious, yes, serious or uh, thoughts, words and actions that are directed towards someone and it becomes personal, then you have to pay that person personally. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So your thoughts, your words and your action, when it becomes targeted at one person, then you have to pay the debt only to that person. It cannot be to someone else. And so he or she will come back in your life so you can repay them that debt. What you have caused, uh, hurt, harm, stolen, whatever it is that you did, you will have to pay it to that person. Yes. Now, the small debts, which are generic, the trivial ones, as we put in, in the first uh, part, that goes into a, a general kind of thing. So let me give you an example. Uh, let me give you a good one. So say, for example, you decided, you know, COVID-19 is happening and people are getting affected. So I'd like to donate uh, to feed, say, the migrant workers. Yes. In doing so, you have helped a large group. And so that goes into a general kind of karmic balance uh, or a bank balance. And it's there so that in future, when you need uh, help, someone might just come and help you. Just someone, random. Yeah, because you help people randomly some random person in the future will come and help you, right? However, say for example, specifically you notice that there is uh, this family that lives near your house and they don't have any money and you decide to actually give them provisions. You help that family come out during this uh, you know, two months lockdown period and you actually help them uh, feed themselves and take care of their bodies. Then the karma becomes personal to them. Yes, and so they, in a, in a later lifetime, will have to also take care of you. So it becomes personal. So even though it was a good deed, it has to come back. Yes, so the act that you do, when it, tra it actually transforms someone else's life, then that person is entitled to pay his debt back to you. Of course, vice versa as well. Now, if you have mistreated someone really badly, yes, uh, one of the examples Master Cho would give us was, uh, there, there, there is this. Uh, there are these two, say, brothers, and they mistreat this help in the house. You know, they hit him, abuse him, do everything. Next lifetime, they're both husband and wife, and this uh, house help becomes their child who is mentally challenged. And so the the karma is because of the cruelty, yes, physical, verbal cruelty, and probably even mental cruelty directed towards that person, that injury. In this lifetime, their lesson is the virtue of loving kindness. They have to practice loving kindness towards the same soul. And so the soul comes back to them as a child. And you've got to remember these kind of children definitely need a lot of attention, a lot of love, a lot of care. And so what they did not do to that soul in that lifetime, this lifetime, they have to overdo it. Yes, which they would normally not do to an average child, but this child, they have to take care, bathe it, wash it, clean it, uh, see that there is proper security because anything could happen to this child, uh, see to it that it feeds itself properly or feed it if it cannot feed itself. So everything is heightened because they have to learn the lesson of loving kindness, right? Now, depending on the parent that has to take care of the child, that is a parent that probably caused more harm to the child than the other. Right. So say one has to go and work. So the working parent may not be in touch with the child on a regular basis as much as the one who's at home with the child. Yes. So karma manifests interestingly in a lot of our uh, lot of our uh, lives. Yeah. Give me a moment. Yeah. I, I know there are lots of you out there and you're going to have lots of questions, but I just want to finish uh, this so it becomes easy and you can ask me questions. I don't mind questions. I just want to uh, get it all out there for you so you understand. Yep. So remember the larger debts in our lives, uh, the larger uh, impact that we make in people's lives with our actions, with our words and our thoughts will become personal. Yes. And the ones that you do in general is just generic and will, it will still come back to you, but uh, it, it would be by some other person, not necessarily the person who you actually fed or uh, the group of people you fed. Yeah. 
So uh, just to kind of uh, help you put this all together. So the, the birth that you take, the very next birth that you take is based again, coming back again to the law of evolution. We were talking about law of cause and effect all this way. So the next birth is the law of evolution. So a man is put in a position so he can most easily develop the qualities that he needs. That is evolution. So every time you come down, the deity would like for you to be in a position that only helps you develop qualities that are good for you. That's it. But for this purpose, yes, um, in humanity, they have created what is called root races. Yes. And so the scheme has given us different races or root races. And so these root races are very important just for us to have a, a very, very brief idea. Each root race helps you develop certain uh, qualities or certain uh, attributes in you. And so you need to be in certain types of groups. Yes. To be able to learn certain things. Yeah. So let me just go through this. I know you have your questions. I hope we can get to all of them. It might be difficult. So just to get through it really quickly, the root race, the present and the most recent root race is what you call the Aryan root race, also called the Indo-Caucasian race. It is the most advanced at this point because it's the highest of all the root races. Yes. The previous one was a Mongolian uh, or the Atlantis root race. So if you know where the Atlantic Ocean is, that's where this particular race originated. Yes. And uh, they have moved around, uh, around the globe. And so you still have uh, this race still existing. And before that was the Negroid uh, race. And they still exist, but they've mingled a lot with all the races that have come. So these are the more or less the main races. I'm going to go to the next one. So under a root race is what you call a offshoot or a sub race. Yes. And so one of the examples that we given in the book is what you call the Romans. So they are a sub race of what you and I call the Aryan race. So the Aryan race is the main one. And then you have the Romans, which is also the Teutonic race. And under this sub race are what you call branch races. And so the French, the Italians, the Germans are all what you call branch races of the sub race. Yes. I hope you understood that. So just to remind you again, so you have the main, yes, the root race, which is in this case, the Aryan race. Under the Aryan race, you have a sub race, which is the Roman. And then under the sub race, you have the branches. So all of them there, the English, the Italians, the Germans. And so all these and the French. And so you have all these different races trying to help you so that you have a greater variety to figure out uh, how you're going to develop this particular quality. And so there are innumerable permutations and combinations for you to choose from to help get this done. So evolution is basically trying to help you become better. And so the root race. Yes. And so each race is adapted to help you develop certain uh, qualities. Right. And that is basically evolution. However, the actions that we have produced in our past. Yes. The limitations that we have caused that is cause and effect that prevents us from then getting at this point the best possible opportunities. And because of what we have created, we may not get the best possible opportunities. We might get the second best. And so you might wonder, you know, how come my life is like this and not like his or hers? That's because of the cause and effect that changes certain opportunities for us. So uh, the will, like I said, of this great deity is to allow man and woman uh, to have suitable situations or positions on earth to help them develop themselves. However, as I mentioned in the last part here, man and women, because of the kind of past that we have uh, created for ourselves, out of the hundred, say there are hundred options for us, because of this cause and effect, only about 50% is then in, in our reach. And again, when we look at what we want to achieve, right? Uh, what, what is our goal this lifetime? Then it comes down to a few more, right? It reduces to just a few. And then ultimately there's that one uh, opportunity or one possibility that works out best because of what we have to learn with reference to people who, have, uh, who are indebted to us or we are indebted to. So the family, you know, uh, the city that you have to be in, the kind of work that you will be with all the people who are there are connected to you because of the, the law of cause and effect. And so then you are put in that family. You are with those parents, you are with those siblings, you have that, that 
uh, group of friends that you meet as you grow. And then you move into, sometimes women especially, move into another family, there's karma there, or there's law, law of cause and effect there, and also the workplace, yes? And so putting all, the, all this together is why we keep coming back over and over and over again till we pay off all our debts, yes? So before we can go to the next rung on the spiritual ladder, you have to clear out all your, all your debts. Only then can you proceed, yes? Okay, people, so we have a few minutes for questions. So let me go to uh, Lakshmi Radha Krishnan first. I'm trying to unmute you. Yes. Appa Namaste Sumi. Appa Namaste uh, Lakshmi. Uh, you see, like every action, there's a reaction. That means like we have done something now means it may happen this incarnation or it may happen the fruit, whatever you have done, next incarnation also it will come. That means you said today uh, school or tomorrow one, one week after the school, you said something like that, no? One month. Correct. That's so in one, one day in school, one day in school is one lifetime. Huh. Okay. Huh. Yeah. So it might happen the same day. Yes. Or it could happen, say, uh, seven days from now, which is one week, or it could happen 30 days from now, which is one month later. So it okay. might happen in seven lifetimes or in after 30 lifetimes. That's what we are trying to say. Thank you, Sumi. Understood now. Thanks Thank a you lot. so much. You're most welcome. Uh, all right. Deepa Krishnamurti coming to you. Hold on. Yes. Thank you, Sumi. I just wanted to ask, like you had talked about uh, in the last couple of times, I think it was, that flute, for example, comes from the astral world. Yeah. Right. And uh, it's not, my question is not related to music or the arts, but there are certain things like, you know, this is lifetime we have all chosen to be healers, for example. It seems like certain skills that we choose to do has some kind of a divine connection. Yes. So as we evolve, is it also expected that we perfect that skill is, or is that just a tool for us to perfect our qualities? Well, um, the point is to use that tool to manifest your greatness, uh, to, to be able to be an instrument of love, to be able to heal and take care of others. So whether it's a healing tool, whether it's a teaching tool, whatever you use is then ultimately, remember even when we spoke about in the other day, uh, in the other session, we said, ultimately, we have to go to altruistic actions, which is towards others. Yes. Right. So healing, maybe you, you decided to initially learn to heal because you wanted to heal yourself or just your family member. But then you realize, hey, you know what? I'd like to heal someone out there as well. And so then your love uh, and the act of healing moves from just family to higher levels. So right. any tool that we ultimately decide to work with, whether you're a scientist, you want to, you want to then create something that would help mankind, not destroy mankind. Yes. So whether it's knowledge based, whether it is something you create, you want to then use it to bring about greater happiness and joy for not just a small group, but for a larger group, because that's our ultimate purpose as we evolve. I hope that's clear enough, Deepa. Uh, okay, I'm still thinking about it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So anything that we have, uh, so say, for example, even if it is an architect, right? Uh, what you create will have to be in the realm of just not to show that you are great, but also to see to it that whatever you create is in harmony with the earth, it yeah. is, uh, is in harmony with uh, nature and with the need of your uh, customer, for example. Right. Yes? So you satisfy them, have... but, but you're st starting to realize there are many more elements that take care of um, that are to be considered when you take care of a certain project or certain things that you do. Right. So for example, taking that architect, if they already have spent maybe four lifetimes learning to be an architect, yes. then uh, that, that, is that what they should kind of specialize and do in further lifetimes? Or now they've finished being an architect and now they have to be something else. I mean, that's well, what's that, like that really depends on the individual soul. If he feels that what he has done is good enough and he's happy with what he has created for man out there, um, he might then choose next lifetime not to be an architect, but to actually become, uh, say, a monk, which is completely different from what okay. he is used to. So since he's developed his mental capacity, he might say, this lifetime, I want to develop more my spiritual capacity. All right. Right? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So that would be one. Another would be, say, for example, you come from a very, very staunch kind of a religion, which is very orthodox. Then you might go to a religion where it gives you freedom to do different things, which you were never allowed to do. 
yes uh, or say for example you've never been on time in your life yes your problem has been constancy of aim and effort at one point in this you might actually be born as a german so you know what time is and then you'll become super strict with time <laughs> Oh. So you move from different, you go through different lifetimes, uh, through different uh, parts of the world, different religions, uh, different types of people, because each situation helps you develop different qualities, which are required for you to make yourself complete or whole. Yeah. Oh. And so if like uh, Deepa was asking, do I continue to remain uh, in this particular field? Uh, would I want to specialize more and more? It depends on what that soul feels. If he feels, you know, I think I've done enough. I want to move to something else. Good enough. Yes. And so that's why you can never compare, uh, especially kids. You know, you can't compare and say, oh, you know what? This kid is so good at this. This kid is not so good because you don't know where they are in the, in the evolution scale. And so it's not fair to compare a, a grade one child uh, in, in the spiritual realm with a 10th grade uh, spiritual student. It's not fair. So similarly, even with little kids who are around us. Yeah. So that's the two of them. Now, let me try and see if I can answer some questions. Okay. Earlier sessions, uh, you can do, you can go and look at the earlier recordings. Um, coming back. How many days of rest do you get when you go back home? Um, it's not usually a couple of days. Uh, depending on how evolved you are, the time that you have in the, on the causal level will start to increase compared to the time that you've had in the lower levels. Yes. So it can increase as you evolve more and more unless you decide you really want to come down to finish some lessons. Lessons are to be learned in the real world. Yes, with reference to certain people that you have in your life in the physical world, lessons have to be learned in the physical world. Yes, in the astral world, in the inner world, it's not possible to learn those lessons. So that's why you have this physical body. That's why you have a family. That's why you have a home and you stay in a certain town, in a certain state, in a certain country. So there's not just personal karma, there's family karma, there is state karma, there is country karma, all associated with what you want to manifest and uh, qualities that you want to work on this lifetime. Yeah. How much time? The time, that's what we spoke about. Minimum, how many years one will take to reach? I'm not sure where, what you're talking about to reach. Is it to come down or to go back? That was mentioned in the earlier classes. Yes, I just mentioned where the parent's karma will affect the child's karma. Yes. So you've got to remember, even you... Uh, when you come here, we have chosen our parents and we have chosen these parents because there is some connection from the past with them, either for them to teach us or for us to teach them or both. Yes. And so whether it's children, whether it's a spouse, whether it's uh, parents, siblings, in-laws, we have connections to them. What we have done to them before, we don't know. Maybe it's good that we don't remember, but try and figure out what is my lesson to learn with him or her? If we can learn that lesson with him or her, it makes a big difference in your life. Yeah. Uh, okay. During incarnation, who decides the gender of the soul? The higher soul decides the gender of the incarnated soul. So say, for example, previous lifetime, you were male and uh, you have treated, for example, women badly. One of the reasons why maybe you will be then given uh, a chance to take on a female body is to figure out how, uh, how it is to be a woman and what happens when man, men actually uh, say or do certain things, how does it affect them? Yes. So yes, even the gender is predetermined because there are certain qualities that you will learn. Now, for example, if you are a woman and you become a mother, it's a very, very, very different experience. And uh, it cannot be experienced as a man, only as a woman. Yes. So there are certain things that you might have to develop. And so one lifetime, you might be male one time, one lifetime, you may be female. And it's, it's also done to balance you out. So ultimately, both the yin and the yang aspects in you will have to be developed equally. You can't be too male, too female either. Yeah. So both will have to develop. Some, somebody proficient in an art or sports. Uh, okay. ERM and Sachin Tendulkar. Did they develop these over incarnations and it reached its zenith during this time? Yes. Uh, so some of them, including even geniuses, yes, they have been working, what Deepa was asking, 
they have been working on it over and over again maybe not specifically cricket i mean maybe it didn't exist before the british but um, it was basically to develop certain skills in the sports uh, in the sports uh, area or with your vocal cords with music uh, or with just listening to music and creating music so they have been working on it over and over and over again and then when they go into the astral and the mental world they work on understanding it further and further so the next lifetime or a lifetime or two later since their their uh, understanding and their uh, knowledge of this has heightened because of their learning both in the astral and mental world when they come the next lifetime what they bring with them is a, a, a an amazing possibility of sound and tones and ability to do something that people almost think impossible right uh, so the geniuses are basically what you call old souls uh, people who are able to reach that level have actually done this for a very very long time learned and learned and learned and learned and now they kind of reach their zenith or their peak yeah so that is right how can i access okay recordings uh, the message is there godwin has given you that is at 657 okay 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 going ahead if the present is built from our past and our future built according to the present how does destiny work in this case does it even ex exist yeah so i hope i answered that uh, later when we spoke about all this so your evolution is basically here to help you go and evolve to become the best person you can possibly be but however, because of the karmas, it tends to change the possibilities. The possibilities actually start to reduce. Yeah. And so that's why you and I are very different, even though we are all trying to evolve, going towards the same uh, place. What is the lesson of a challenged child? I presume you're talking about mentally challenged. Uh, now, in most of those cases, like the example I gave you, sometimes it's not really the lesson for that child. It's more for the parents who have to take care of the child. The learning is more for them. Now, whether you find uh, children who have Down syndrome, who are autistic, who are mentally challenged, or even physically challenged, you'll notice that many of them are very, very loving. Their emotions are usually, you know, uh, there with, with so much uh, radiance and uh, non-judgment. Non they will just come to you and hug you and kiss you and spend time with you and sit with you. They have no problems. They have no blocks. They have no walls. Yes. So they actually, if you look at their life, they are happy with their surroundings. They're happy with you. They're happy with everything around. So the lesson usually in this case is usually for the parent or the family that surrounds them. So it could be your sibling. Uh, it could be your own child or it could be your grandchild. Yes. So the lesson is usually for the people that live around them. Uh, if they have to be loved and taken care of so much, then you have to figure out what did I do last lifetime to have this child and to have to learn to do this regularly every day every year till they are around with us yes so that's the lesson so there is no fault of the child yeah the maid is living with a challenged child that's sad for the child too yes of course uh, now again when these people the parents have then left their own child with a maid to live and stay uh, the maid usually will take care of the child. Yes, much more than the parents, which means that the parents, remember what we spoke about dull students? They're the dull students. They don't learn the lesson. Next lifetime, they're going to get it even worse. Yes, uh, it's not going to be so easy for them next lifetime. So since they haven't le learned the lesson, it's going to become a tougher lesson next, next time. So it's like this, when you don't do well in school and you don't pass, you have to stay in the same class again until you learn the lesson. And so if you haven't learned the lesson with this child, you're going to be put maybe not with one child, maybe two, two, two children. And then not situations where you can give it away to a maid. There may not even be a maid. You'll be in a situation where you will have to struggle, take care of both of them and do, and do take care of other karma. So it might become actually tough for this, for this uh, parent or this family. Why child are mentally challenged? Okay, so I answered that hopefully. Uh, a question on decree against tithing. I have been told that one many decree across, what I mean is if one tithing, one tithes money, can they decree for a return of better health? 
if that is the right teaching from master. Now, when you tithe, usually the tithing, the decree that you do is for all aspects, yes, uh, for good relationship, for health, wealth, and spirituality. However, if you, ha you are struggling, right, the, the karma in your life is uh, more or less okay, no issues, but if one aspect, say for example, your wealth is suddenly having trouble, which means the negative karma of wealth has increased. Yes, and so the, the good karma that you have is very little. And so you might have to start paying purely for this. And so the tithing will have to then be only for um, prosperity with reference to your business or your career. And so until and unless this increases to a good amount, then it gets negated. And so you will then overcome what is called the negative karma of wealth at this point. And the same thing with your your body and if you have uh, a situation where the body is ill that means your physical health karma has started to materialize negative karma and so you need to either heal uh, you need to either provide money in areas which is similar to your condition so that when people are healed with that similar situation the good karma manifests as you getting healed yeah okay does i'm not sure what applies to friends Okay, with reference to, this is Anjali asking about a soul as a human plant and animal. We've already finished this in the last chapters, yeah? So you'll have to go back to an earlier recording. Uh, how do you know whether you are being helped in this incarnation? Uh, is indebted already and coming back to you or is it a new one? Uh, which we will have to repay. Now, in most cases, uh, for many of us, it's basically a lot of the negative karma that is manifesting is with reference to what we've done in the past. Yes. And so that is what is coming. But uh, with regards to the, the past that is, that is manifesting right now, our choice of thoughts, words, and action will then either negate, yes, and neutralize the negative karma or might actually create further new karmas. Yes, both good or bad. So yes, there, there can be new creative, but usually the lesson is to try and negate and learn and come out of the negative. And if you create more good karma, no problem. Yeah. What if the person likes who has worked out his karma and won't have to take rebirth again? Yes, if the person has completed all their negative karma and has evolved to a certain extent, they do not have to come and they become what is called an arhat a paramahansa or a saint. And such people do not have to come back uh, and take on a physical body. They need to then go upwards, yes, towards the intuitional world and upwards uh, towards the divine spark. And so their journey is then going upwards, which is uh, also what you and I will have to do once we get to the same point. So would it mean that the law of evolution is intertwined with the law of karma? Yes, of course. That's why I was trying to explain both of those are intertwined. They're there together for you and I to recognize. If we understand these two laws and we work by it, we can be a better student in school. We can learn better, work with it. Yes, uh, change the way we think, feel, and act according to it so our lives can become better. Uh, can we share the recordings with our family member? This one, yes, because uh, this is theosophy. It's not Masachoa's teaching. So if you feel it would help them, you can share it with family. Uh, uh, with your family uh, Bhagya and how come a parent loves one child and doesn't love another again got to do with the karma uh, so if the child who they love has been loving to them earlier so they're just reaping that but the child who they do not love has probably treated them also badly yes and so this lifetime they now um, they now help you recognize what it is like to be left behind without being loved right i know it's not easy especially when you're a child to understand you know i probably did this to them and that's why they're doing this to me but that's basically what the child is going to go through and if they learn through that and still love their child sorry live still love their parents even though they don't love them at some point love is the only cure for many of these relationship issues yes whether it's been as harsh as harming them and hitting them and beating them in a previous lifetime uh, to just simply ignoring them like they almost don't exist. Yes, and that's what it feels like when you are not loved by your loved ones. And so if you're feeling that way, you have to remember you've done this to them. 
and it's personal right now. The only way you can overcome that is by love. Okay, does um, evolution happen only on Earth? <laughs> Again, uh, in the previous class, we've spoken about other evolutions also in the solar system. Uh, unable to view the previous sessions. Uh, I'm going to ask Aditya to try and help you there. Aditya, if you can kindly help KM here. 7.24 time. Oh, KM is, uh, Aditya has already answered him. Okay. All right, link, link, link. If an old man dies and goes into higher worlds, what is their correct age? Younger or in the same age as in the physical world? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you mean. So I, I presume you mean that in this physical world, uh, say the average age is 70, you die at 70. When you come back, are you talking about coming back and then the correct age would be younger? So it's got nothing to do with the physical age in the physical world. Uh, the age that we're talking about is the age of the higher soul. And so uh, remember we were talking about the days in school. So every day in school is like a different lifetime. And so you might have had millions of lifetimes so that you could evolve to become the person you are today. Yes, evolution doesn't begin only as a human. So please remember that. And so uh, we have been evolving to become better and better and better. And in the process, uh, if we've been coming as humans several, several, several hundred times down and going up, then because of all that we've learned, we are considered an old soul, not an old man, uh, but just an old soul who has a greater understanding. So the divine light, the divine love and the divine power aspect is much more in that person. And so they're able to manifest more in this lifetime and hopefully learn and uh, move on through their evolution in, 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 a, in, in a more effective way compared to a new soul who's struggling to understand, you know, how does all this work, right? And so if you can understand the two laws of evolution and uh, the law of uh, cause and effect, you can actually make this lifetime much easier. Is that, that's what the book is saying and that's what we're trying to talk about. How many souls born in India, increasing population, what could be the divine plan? Uh, well, you have to look at the earlier <laughs> sessions where we spoke about the animal life, uh, the animal kingdom and moving into the human kingdom and then further moving on, right? How many lifetimes one soul takes? We've already mentioned, uh, we've, we've taken many, many, yes. Um, as, as evolution, we looked at millions, uh, but as human souls, uh, maybe a couple of hundreds probably at this point. Yeah, so we, will, we looked at animal plant and all that. So you can look at the earlier sessions for that. Why do you love someone more than another? It's purely because of your connection with that soul in a previous lifetime. Yes, maybe uh, she or he would have been a parent that loved you so dearly, a spouse that loved you so dearly, a child that loved you dearly. And then this lifetime they're here maybe as a friend or some other relationship. And so your bond because of that love that you've already created before is super strong and uh, it goes beyond sometimes beyond the measure of what you would call love to others. And you wonder why it's just because of the past. Yeah, it's, and it's no problem loving someone more than another. There's nothing wrong. If I don't do anything in this incarnation, then I don't create any karma. <laughs> uh, okay, for the next lifetime and no more in reincarnation. No, you've got to remember that we have incarnated in the past and so those will still continue. So even if you don't create for, I don't know how you're going to do that, but if you don't create any karma this lifetime, good for you, but you'll have to still come next lifetime because there's still other karmas for you to, you, you have to pay. And so until you, you, until and unless you pay all of it, you will still keep coming. Yes. So the best thing for you to do is not to not create any karma, try and create more good karma. Because when you create more good karma, you have a greater karmic ba balance, a positive karmic balance, which will help you the next lifetime and the lifetime after that to offset all your debts as quickly as possible. Yes, um, so that would be my suggestion to you. If we are talking, uh, if we are talking our first incarnation as a human, how our soul connections are determined? Uh, well, with every time, with every lifetime that you and I come, we do interact with other people and we affect them positively and negatively. So starting with the very first lifetime, just starting in the human um, kingdom, you start off with your good and bad karmas. And normally they say if you start at the primitive level, usually it's more bad than good. Yeah, because you're trying to struggle and, and live life and uh, 
harm and do everything possible so that you can survive. Survival is usually what they usually go with. We're talking about primitive man, yeah? We're not talking about uh, tribals. I'm not saying the tribal people are bad, yeah? We're talking about primitive, very, very different. Do we have the same circle of people that we have this in the next lifetime? No, it really depends on what you want to learn and with whom do you have a greater debt and if you're ready to pay that. And so it changes every time. What if someone learns this spirituality in a few times than others and achieves greater greatness uh, fastly? Is there any purpose or previous incarnations goodwill? Uh, if you have spiritually evolved, say for example, um, I'm hoping most of you know Grandma Sachua, and he has created a lot of good karma by doing what he has. And he has achieved a certain level of spiritual growth. Now, in his case, if he has treated someone, even in the least bit, uh, not, so, not so nice, uh, then Master Cho will have to pay for that, right? But if it's more generic, then it's just general. However, if uh, this person has done all the good and has been kind to practically everybody around, has generated enough good karma to even offset uh, some of the not so nice things that were said or thought, then it gets negated and they don't have to come back. But if we are still on the way to achieving, to becoming a spiritually evolved person, then we might have to come back again to continue to become even more spiritually evolved and trying to neutralize our negative karma even the next lifetime or maybe a couple of lifetimes. Yeah. So say, for example, you were a monk or a, a nun or a priest uh, and, and you did a lot of spiritual uh, activities and uh, worked on yourself to become better. This lifetime, you may not be necessarily a spiritual person, but you might be a householder, but spiritual. Yes, and therefore you might be attracted to spirituality, to a teacher, and to continue to practice your spirituality, even though you are a householder. Right? And so you try to then evolve faster through this process as well. Yeah? Oh my God, okay. <laughs> Few more and then we'll end. It's heard that in Tamil Nadu, in Vaiteshwaram temple, people living there have our palm leaves. Okay, the palm leaves have been written by some amazing, great uh, spiritual beings earlier. You've got to remember that there is something called the Ar Arshic Records. And if you go into the Ar Arshic Records, there is the present, there is the past, and there is a future also. And so if you can access that, they have written based on that, the exact details about you and me, even this lifetime. And so you wonder how come, you know, my name is, you know, this and this, and then I have uh, this many siblings and my parents are still alive or one is not alive or whatever. And then I have this and this, how come they've written all that? Because it's there on the Akashic records. Yeah. So um, it's, it's, you need to find the, the true, uh, the right people because these uh, leaves have been split into different parts of India and you need to really find the right one. Yeah, sometimes you go all the way and if it's not your time to read your leaf, even if you go there, they will not find your leaf. It might be in a different part of India. Yeah, so there again, karma there. I have done degree in architecture, but not doing any practice, but I am more interested in healing that's all right so if you have learned architecture now but you don't feel inclined towards that but you you want to do something else it's okay there are choices that the soul makes uh, in its journey even in this uh, physical world in, in the earth school and so if you choose to become a healer and you're happier doing this and this gives you more satisfaction it's absolutely fine yeah there's nothing wrong uh, with having chosen to move away from architecture yeah uh, don't worry about it. Don't get scared about the information. It's just for you to have an understanding. It's, you know, like when you go into a new college, uh, for example, you're an Indian and you go suddenly to university in Australia or America, you have to understand how the culture works there. Because if you're not oriented as to how this university works, you might actually go do something silly and then get into trouble. Right? So what we're doing right now is trying to orient you to understand how does this earth school work? If you can understand it and start to slowly work towards behaving in accordance with it, you might actually have an easier life. So don't worry about it. There's nothing to be scared of. If you don't do anything, like he says, nothing much can happen. Yeah. As long as you don't do something bad, your life will still be okay. 
uh, isn't a soul just a sum total of karma, uh, death, sins, plus good deeds. Uh, it's not just that. You've got to remember you and I as the higher soul are also trying to evolve. Uh, we've, we've coming down because we need to evolve to go back up. And to do that, we have to clear out all our karmas. And that's why the two laws, the law of evolution, the law of karma are intertwined. And if we can understand that we have to uh, neutralize all this, yes, pay back all our debts and at the same time evolve, then we will be out of this cycle of reincarnation. What if the parents have to work and the maid has to take care of the mentally challenged? That is fine. Uh, we're talking about sometimes where, you know, the, the person uh, is actually left out of the house to live with the maids. I know stories about that from uh, school, from my school days. So that's what I was referring to. Now, if the parents have to earn, because, you know, taking care of mentally challenged children, uh, helping with their education and other things can be very expensive. So both parents do have to work, but you'll also notice that you can't leave them only with the maid all the time. When you come back, you have to show them more love and care compared to what you would do for another child extra, right? Because that, ch that child really misses you. Any child actually misses their parents, right? But this child will miss you even more, right? So as a parent, we'll have to go back to them and give them a lot more care. You'll have to do a lot more activities with them so they notice and they can understand that you still love and care for them. Yes, because all the money in the world will not give them the love they require. So at some point, <clears throat> not because a, a child is mentally challenged, sometimes some children just need your attention more. And I have known parents who've given up their jobs, usually women, to take care of the child till they've grown into um, a, a young adult. And then they say, okay, fine. Now you are on your own. I've done all that I can to help you. Now go ahead with your studies, your college, your university, and then they're fine. Right. So there are parents who still sacrifice even working, even though they're very good at what they do uh, to take care of a child. Yes. Not because they're mentally challenged, uh, but if they are, if they do it, I can totally understand why. Yeah. OK. I mean, is the aim of a soul of karma. If the soul has overcome all the karma, then uh, and, and neutralized it and hopefully also evolve spiritually, they don't have to come. I'm hoping that's what you require, uh, you're mentioning here. Root races, are the different races still existing? Yes, uh, the Mongolian race or the Atlantis race is basically the more, you know, the, the, the I don't know how you call it, uh, the Chinese, Korean, you know, uh, the Japanese, uh, the people from Mexico, they have a certain kind of feature, the features are very, very similar. Uh, they are the people from the Atlantis race or the, the race that we were referring to prior to the Aryan race. And then the Negroid are basically uh, the African community. Yes. Um, so the African, uh, the original uh, Africans have very, very uh, different features from the Aryans or the Mongolian race. And so that race has mingled with a lot of other, uh, other root races and sub races and have changed, but they're still there. They're, I mean, if you go to some interior parts of uh, Africa, and even some parts of Australia, you will still find some of them there. Yeah. Okay, people, I think with that, we'll call it a wrap. Yes, I'm, I know I can't answer all of it all the time. I'm sorry about this, but hopefully I've given you some kind of food to take back home. And uh, you can think about this and work through. I'll see you tomorrow at 6.30 after the meditation at 6 o'clock. This is uh, the, the chapter tomorrow is chapter eight, which is the purpose of life. Yes. So if you'd like to join us, please join us. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. Atma Namaste. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your dinner. Enjoy your uh, time with your family. Yes. Lockdown is a good thing. So let's go down there and do this. Yes. Remember, we're generating good karma by doing this. We are there with them for a reason. Since you know a little bit more, let's go out there or back to them and also thank them for giving them, giving you the time to stay with me for one and a half hours. Yeah. Thank you. Atma Namaste. Enjoy your evening. I'll unmute you.